So, hi, I'm James. I um, came up with this talk, well, I came up with a project uh, which I've been doing at work and I was having a whole bunch of fun doing it and um, I built a few things with it and um, yeah, I, I thought people might, uh, other people might want to share the fun. Um, it's, um, uh, and so I came up with the sort of title, um, Astronauts, Conway's Law and Text Adventure, just because just it was the collection of things that I was thinking about at the time. So, um, I realised, um, having prepared the talk, that this is the only astronaut in the whole talk, so sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, hi, I'm James. Um, so, uh, I work for um, a company called Mozilla. Um, I'm, uh, I haven't actually realised um, written any um, JavaScript um, professionally for the past year or so, so I've mostly been working in Swift with the teeny tiniest bit of um, uh, JavaScript, something or other, um, old, old stuff. But this was really an excuse to. Um, so, yeah, so why am I here today? Um, so, one of my side projects, which I guess I get paid for, um, is um, uh, I'm, I'm putting proposal for um, um, web extensions, so an extension to web extensions which actually deals with extensions, extendable web extensions, so it's really difficult to talk about. Um, and um, so one of the, the, the sort of first um, thing I was going to do was um, build a, a prototype in the easiest um, place that I could find, which was um, happened to be Node.js. Um, Node.js was JavaScript, which is the right language, um, but also um, it had the same module system and um, Node 4 had just come out, so it was a real shoeing for uh, learning um, ES5 and 6. Yeah, six. Um, and I sort of shied away from Babel and, and what have you because um, life's too short. <laughs> <laughs> I've since seen the uh, error model. So, um, so, yeah, I had to um, sort of shoe this. This, um, this cool project, um, because it to not make it sound like it was all about me. Um, something about architecture um, in there, which was really the problem that I was trying to um, solve and explore. Um, so I'm going to give you some intuitions that um, I've, I've had about, or um, that over the years, I'm, I'm sure we've all, we've all learned about um, software architecture and software design. So um, I saw this um, series of tweets, which I thought I'd um, wholesale steal. Um, for um, so here's the um, architecture you learn at, at school. It's all very blocky. It's all very simplistic and simple. Um, and here's the stuff that software architects that you probably met, um, so, uh, architects, astronauts, um, think about and talk about and, and um, lust um, after. And here's actually the, the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, well, we've all been in these sorts of projects where um, uh, it's all been about half hour. So, um, so yeah, uh, when you, everybody's talked about the, the interior architecture and um, you know, uh, you've got a, a UI layer and a middleware layer and data access layer and what have you. And, and, um, but then also you've probably all been in, in a process meetings where you've been encouraged to think about sort of um, things in vertical slices and um, sort of BDD and Agile and we've got to ship um, every two weeks or we've got to be ready to ship every two weeks. Um, and of course, those two things are definitely in, completely in, con uh, in um, conflict. So this is what um, you kind of um, start end up end up look like. And this isn't the comedy slide um, because this is actually probably what what you're aiming for. Um, and sort of end tier is the, the Plato's cave of, uh, of the architecture that you're um, aiming towards but never actually going to reach. But this is actually what it um, usually looks like. <laughs> so here dragons and um, do not code and uh, do not edit and just crazy shit going on here all over the place. Oh, what's up? Um, please do not touch this code because I don't know how it works. So you know, we some those sorts of clients. So um, a couple of um, things that I've been carrying around um, recently um, um, is uh, a quote who I, I forget where I've, um, I heard it, but it, it, it just really solidified a whole bunch of things for me, which is architects should actually build bigger things. And that's the, the idea that you sort of, you're, you're trying to, you're trying to build this big thing, you need a plan, you, you 
because otherwise organic growth just doesn't work um, after a certain scale. And um, in conflict with that, you've got this, um, you can't hold it all in your head at once, and um, if you're going to build a big project, it's going to be built with, one, um, with more than one of you, and probably more than one team of you. So, um, and that's when um, Conway's Law kicks in, which is um, written by, um, well, it was, it was um, sort of popularised by um, uh, Fred Brooks in uh, Mythical Man, Man Month, um, and quoted in paid, paid by uh, uh, Melvin Conway in 1967, which um, suggests that um, the, um, any software um, software system of uh, any scale um, starts to resemble the communication pathways of the, uh, the uh, teams that um, built it. You can read that there, I can say. So, if we go back to the, the, these, um, these N tier architectures and these layer uh, and these slices and what have you, they're, they're obviously going to be in complete. Um, and, and, um, they're, they're, going, they're going to be contradicting Conway's law completely. And that, that makes it um, interesting and sort of allows you to do all sorts of uh, post-mortem <coughs> of um, unsuccessful projects that you've, uh, you've uh, all been part of. I've certainly been part of the unsuccessful projects. Um, and I've sort of got, got me and several other people thinking about sort of um, how, do we, how do we embrace Conway's law and make it so that you know, the architecture sort of sh is shaped by the teams that we, um, and, and accept the fact that that's going to happen rather than fight against it. Architecture is actually built building things. And what I love about this slide, there's no reason to have this slide in, apart I was going to have a space station, but um, this guy here just, uh, <laughs> and it's a fat is just great. <laughs> so, so, and over my career and, and probably everybody else's, um, I've sort of come up with these intuitions. Not, they're not original, so I'm not going to take any credit for them. Um, and this, this idea of complexity versus complicatedness. And for the, the, the best example of, of that would be um, the, the two games Go and Chess. Now, Chess has uh, it has what six different uh, types of play, um, move, um, six different types of piece. Um, you start off with twenty pieces on the board. Is it twenty? No, it's uh, thirty-two pieces on the board. Um, sixty-four, um, a board of sixty-four squares, and um, each player at the beginning can move twenty, pe uh, 20 uh, types of move for, from that. Whereas with Go, you have a nineteen by nineteen board. You only have one move, which is put a piece down, which means that you're um, so you've got very few number of number, few types of move, but you can move an awfully large number of types of move, and and so that's the the idea of the complexity of you've got lots of lots of types of simple moves to make, rather than fewer types of you know, fewer moves of for multiple. I, yeah, I think everybody realizes what I'm talking about. So, yeah, intuition, very difficult to uh, explain and, and articulate. And, um, and do I need to read this? Is, is this? is this sort of fairly accepted fact, or, or shall I go through it um, step by step? I've got hundreds of slides. Um, <laughs> do you want me to go through this? No? Okay. Could, you, could you say what the difference between complexity and complicatedness is? Just... I think I've just said that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what you were defining. Well, I'm just illustrating rather than defining. Okay. So, sorry, yeah, sorry. So, chess is the complicated game of lower complexity, but Go is the highly complex and regular game, but, um, but very low com complicatedness. And it gets kind of confusing because people use complexity and complicatedness sort of uh, interchangeably. Um, so, I've, I've sort of um, talked about um, regularity rather than um, complexity. Um, and I'll keep using um, complicatedness until I can't speak anymore. Um, I think it's worth that he's reading out the other, the other ones. Okay. I mean, it helps to go in. Okay. Well, and also, we should take over. <laughs> we should, yes. <laughs> yes. Um, so, okay, so that's um, complicatedness and um, complexity. Um, and 
Uh, so I'm going to read this out because it will um, scan. So if our design is too simplistic, it will have lots of special cases. And the special cases are bad, okay? <laughs> and um, the, proce the process of having an architecture, coming up with an architecture, is a, an upfront cost. And you, you, you make your project more complicated than it probably needs in order for it to grow um, regularly. Yeah? And so technical debt, on the other hand, is an increase in complication, but at the cost of regularity. So you add a special case hit in here or a special case in there, instead of fixing the fixing the architect architectural problem that um, that you're trying to work around. Okay, does that yeah? Good. I'm glad everybody's interested in that. Well. And to further illustrate this point, <laughs> I saw this great tweet which um, just I thought I'm, I'm going to steal that. Um, because it, it, it perfectly illustrates everything that I've been saying, which is the area behind my TV has built up some technical debt. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got a second slide, which is even one. <laughs> And I really like this slide because like, you can stack those monitors as high as you want and you could tidy up the wiring, that wiring, but the monitors have been moved and there's, there's a problem with the, the electricity, the power that um, is sort of not, not evenly distributed and you just end up with these wires all over the place. Oh, and you've got you know, big boxes, big grey boxes. I wish we could see the other side. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, it's beautiful. It's also a sharp one. You know that scene in the Matrix? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I'm going to further sort of um, make, uh, solidify my own argument um, with another picture which is not very relevant, which is an intuition that good wiring is kind of necessary and uh, an implication of good architecture. So the person who's, who's done this has arranged it so that there's a minimal set of wiring that is necessary. And then he's tied up, or he or she has tied up these things so it's completely obvious to go that you know, we'll plug this in here and we'll put it in this, this bundle here because I know this bundle is going somewhere over here and then I'll, uh, I'll at the end, other end I can worry about um, where I'm going to plug it in. But I know roughly where that bundle's going. So I, I'm saying that that's my intuition is that that's a well-architected system. And it, it's it's kind of worth talking about for this frameworks and tool and toolkits and libraries and, and who who who's got a working definition of the difference between you know, a framework and toolkit. Uh, framework, uh, yeah, toolkit. Okay. Anybody? No? A framework is, yeah, you go for me. Oh, yeah. a, a framework is more of a holistic solution, whereas a toolkit is something that, that you can pluck sort of individual parts out of without needing to embrace the philosophy of the thing as a whole. Okay, yeah. anybody else? A lot, uh, but a lot of people say a uh, uh, yeah, framework you call a library, a uh, framework calls you. Yeah, so, so I would agree that it captures the important thing, but it's usually true. And so we got Russia. I've heard it called the Hollywood Principle. Don't call us for a year. That's, that's the, the, the framework. Um, um, so, yeah, but there's been a sort of movement away against frameworks. Um, and there is a joke about you know, uh, JavaScript frameworks come up every five minutes. Um, um, but I think there's a sort of distaste uh, at the moment, a sort of fashion, I think, um, against frameworks. And I think that's really because we're, we're control freaks. We, we don't like to give, give up control. And we certainly don't trust the, the, the framework writers, unless they're really, really good, which they're generally not as good as us, because we're arrogant. <laughs> um, but on the other hand, we kind of like them as well. Because certainly at the beginning of, of the learning curve, 
they give you a lot of structure. They give you a lot of structure uh, of how you should be writing the code. And they, give, they do a lot of heavy lifting for you. Okay. So this is part two. I don't know how long I've been going for it. Um, Whiz by that. Okay. So, so I talked about this um, work that I've been doing, um, this post um, which I've been doing, um, doing work. And the, the overall project, the, the proposal about extensions, extending extensions, it's, it's called add-on section. It, that's probably the last time I'm going to talk about that word, add-on section, because it's... Um, Portmentardation. Sorry, say again? Portmentardation. Brilliant. <laughs> I'm, <another. laughs> I'm going to grab that. So, so I'm going to talk about this prototype which I which I've built in in Node.js, and I sort of came up with the word. I, I don't know. I've been doing quite well with them, and then I came up with it. Um, the compo, which is, um, and it's really about. We've got these components which are composable, and and. Plus, um, I, I just had in my head uh, that, that that thing about um, sort of eighty percent of our, our job as software developers is is um, plumbing. You now we're we're, sti we're stitching two uh, or more frameworks together, and um, so um, Compo was the um, the guy in the bath in um, uh, Last of the Summer Wine, which I haven't got a picture of because that would be a cheap one. Um, so yeah, so I will be referring to Compo now um, uh, for a lot of the rest of this talk. And um, so yeah, just um, just to go on, Ali's saying the mixable service as if it's a thing. Um, it's not. I just sent him a, an outline for the talk, and, and so uh, um, and I can tweet you easily. So <laughs> <I'm just like laughs> yeah, right. So um, so yeah. Um, I'm sort of these are the, the, the that was the feeling I was getting when I was when I was when I used Compo, and, and, and so we'll, we'll we'll come on to that um, later on. And so design goals, um, design goals really were to make our application code sort of more yeah composable and. Um, Easy. We, we talk about extensible code, and we talk about the um, reusable code, and I talk about um, working in teams and multiple teams. And Compo is really stealing a bunch of ideas from um, uh, Eclipse and um, OSGR. So if if that completely disqualifies me as a human being, because I'm talking about Java projects and so on. Um, and but the, the proposal is, is to sort of add this to web extensions and I think it would make it would make web extensions really interesting. Um, not that they're not interesting now. Um, and so those are the explicit type design goals. And, and so auditing and reviewing um, sort of it, it is about um, making it easy easier for um, the um, add-ons review team, hi Tom. What's more web extensions? Yeah. Okay, so web extensions, big um, you're right. Web extensions are, um, so Firefox um, has these things called add-ons, <coughs> and um, Chrome has these things called extensions, and Opera has these things called, I don't know what Opera is, have they? <laughs> um, <laughs> Safari and Fantasy, like atoms, possibly, I don't know. Um, uh, yeah. um, so web extensions is, <laughs> Officially, it's a it's a move to standardise this add-ons stroke extension stroke whatever into a single um, single API. So you should be able to write a, um, uh, an extension for Chrome and um, and then be able to take it and run it on uh, Firefox or less um, uh, more rarely the other way around. Um, unofficially, I'm on camera, so I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, but this was the first prototype, and I wanted to make it easy as possible. And so, the, the obvious thing to, to do was 
sort of um, use NPM and um, have NPM modules and um, use their dependency uh, management system and their um, require uh, and what have you. Um, and also um, sort of no build steps because uh, uh, because any build step makes it more complicated. Right? So, um, but as I'm saying earlier on, I built this thing and then started using it and had a couple, made a couple of examples and made a couple of um, sort of sample um, projects and using it because it's 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 no JS, it's not on the client side, so it was definitely server side um, and it turned out to be really fun. The experience of building stuff was really easy and it was cool. <laughs> And I thought, yeah, that's um, something to talk about. Completely unexpected. And I don't know whether it's because the original design or the, uh, the intent was the right, right thing, or whether um, some of the design choices that I made along the way just, just to make things, get things working, were, were, or, or <coughs> a combination of, of the two. I, think, I feel like I've stumbled on something, and I wanted to talk about it. So we've done this sort of architecture um, bit. And now this is the excuse, that, that was the excuse to talk about this project. Is, is everybody okay with that? <laughs> okay. So, if anybody comes to see any of my talks before, I always talk about words. Um, actually, this is a list of contents which is incomplete. Uh, I only finished the slides about an hour ago, so uh, <laughs> uh, this uh, these uh, contents are not, not really complete. So, a word about words. Now, we've talked about a whole load of things. Projects, existing projects. And they have words, and they're all roughly the same. Or they have a bunch of concepts with different words. So I'm not going to talk about it at all. I will introduce words very slowly and concept bit by bit. If you're interested, I will tell you later on what name convention and how I to, to derive uh, deviated from it. Um, but we'll, we'll just go very slow. Is that okay? Okay. And I'm going to come up with, I'm going to work with a, it's a relatively complicated um, uh, use case, but it's a set of examples that sort of all fit together quite nicely. It's, it's non-trivial, but it's fun and it's um, and it's architecturally interesting. Okay, so my 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 goal actually was to have a hack night where we could all contribute, we could all make a game together. And now we've done that before, um, but the goal was to make a game at any cost. And I'm, this one is. The ulterior motive was to try out this, this architecture and, and see whether it was, it was kind of interesting and whether it worked um, for, for multiple people and multiple teams. Uh, and multiple teams, multiple people with different skill levels as well. Okay, so the first word I'm going to introduce is extension point. Now, an extension point, it's, um, it's a collection. It's a collection of things. Let's, let's just say object at, at this stage. I, I think officially I'd probably call them managed objects, but <coughs> these are the properties that, that an extension point has. So it has a common add and remove method. Um, more on that later. Um, it has a set of views. So um, if you give, if you make it, if it will have, if some. Uh, uh, <laughs> Optionally, you can give it a key or a property which will be used as a key at every point. And so you can then view that list of that set of things as a, as a diction, dictionary um, and be able to reference it. That makes sense. All this will make sense. <laughs> and then, and here's the crucial thing it emits events when objects are added and removed. 
and um, in order to um, have some um, sort of ordering impediments, which we'll, we'll come to, it emits out events for each um, object that's in the collection um, when a new listener, when a new one hand listener is, is registered. So, all that is a lot of words. Um, so that's roughly, because we understand code much better than words. So has anybody got any um, anything to say about that? Hi, this is ES6 class syntax, right? With, with, with uh, simplified, so yeah, uh, shorthand methods. Um, yes. So it is JavaScript. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's not Swift and it's not um, JavaScript with flow types or anything crazy like that. It's not one of your talks, Tom. Um, <laughs> but it's not based on something made by Facebook. That's true. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is, um, so you can give it a string key property, so um, uh, when I talk about manage objects, I've um, stupidly put extender here, which is the next word, which um, so extension points can hold extenders. And then views, um, so here you'll be able to get the extension point dot array, which will be the list. Um, just an unsorted list of um, the objects, um, object would be, which would be that dictionary, and um, object groups, which um, is the same as the underscore um, thing, so it maps a, a key to a list of things that have that key. And then you can add the uh, add and remove okay. So with that extension point, I'm going to transform this game map code. So, um, and don't don't mention, don't worry too much about this internal state word. Um, it, yeah, don't worry. <laughs> so, with this game map that we've that we've just defined here. Yeah, with this game map here, I'm going to use that and I'm going to add a couple of rooms. And then what I want, does, does that look roughly, that looks fine? Everybody okay with that? So, so now I'm going to transform that using an extension. So the extension point might have, I can't remember whether I've got, I um, instantiate the extension point later on. Is everybody okay with that? So what I'm doing is I'm, yeah, I'm passing in the extension point as a, as a parameter to the uh, constructor, and, and then I'm um, registering some add and remove events um, in the constructor. So now I no longer have an add or, or remove um, room methods. And more simply, this doesn't actually need any events at all, it just um, maintains a list of, or a, um, a key value um, storage of um, the ID, um, ID to room mapping um, with object. So, you happy with when I talk about view of it? It's, a, um, it's not actually the, the, the back end store, it, but it's, a, it's, a, it's the same data but in a slightly different shape. Okay. Is it worth just, just mentioning very briefly what, uh, how Test Adventure works? Because a lot of people know, and some way. That's great, I haven't even considered that. Okay. Um, <laughs> Who doesn't know how a text adventure works? Okay. Well, no, just as a... <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> Who else was like Ali, pretending not to know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, 
so um, a text adventure, um, you um, are, have a sort of um, a vertical scrolling um, text panel uh, which is um, your, which will present you with a description of where you are and you have a, a, a prompt, a command line, um, to type in commands. And some, um, some will give you a sort of a help command which allows you to um, work out exactly what you can type, some won't, and um, you have to discover them yourself. Um, and the sort of parser and the um, richness of the, the world and um, the sort of the display um, really um, differentiates the, um, uh, the one game from another. And you can get um, text adventure um, libraries, frameworks, toolkits, um, and then you can add your own content, or you can, um, yeah, um, there are choose your own adventure books, we, sort of, um, there's, a, there's a format uh, where you can, um, I forget what the, the format is called, um, but then you can write your own uh, engine on top of that. Uh, if you want. So it's, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's a little bit like um, writing your own domain specific language, it's a bit of a writing passage to, to write. And there are a bunch, there are a real bunch of fun to uh, to uh, write. In fact, one of my first um, sort of significant programs um, at school um, on a BBC um, master system um, on an Econet, which is a precursor to an Ethernet, um, what was a, um, a huge, um, well, huge, it felt huge, a 128k machine. Um, uh, that was huge, um, and um, that, uh, on a network. Of <laughs> so, okay, so I'm, I'm just giving um, a, a data structure now called uh, Game Map, um, and it's made up of rooms, and the rooms will um, have exits, and you will be able to type go north, or go south, or go uh, upstairs, or downstairs, or whatever. And um, so I've now written my, the whole of the map on it. Um, and the idea is, is that multiple people can contribute to, to the world. So multiple people can, um, uh, non-coordinating um, non teams can, or non-coordinating people can uh, sort of contribute to the map. Uh, and, um, and the sort of unit of contribution would be the, the room. Okay. So um, I've sort of given you um, given us uh, the, the transform which I made and to add a, an extension point and um, the extension point where this is with, without the extension point so I have the add room and remove room and, um, and then I've, um, I've taken the add and remove out of the, um, out of the game map and used a, a room, uh, an extension point which has the add and remove um, object and, uh, so, that meanwhile somewhere else, which is, I've sort of, I'm deliberately being vague about where this is because quite often, and this is my experience, I don't know about anybody else's, is that you write this beautiful class structure or beautiful code and then you start putting the data. And putting the data, you start thinking, well, and that's where it all gets messy. By putting it, it's like customers and meetings, they're just unavoidable, but they're anything else. So, yeah. Um, I said about the um, the ID. So um, so you might um, here you might say um, you get the room extension point, which is um, I, uh, has a, a key of ID, and so um, this rooms will will be a um, the object will be a sort of um, a bunch of these these objects, but keyed off the the ID here. So, so you should be able to say get room sixty eight Mill Street dash theatre and it come back with this object. And from that we're going to construct what well, maybe um, the, the, the map. Okay. This thing can run out of batteries now. <laughs> so. so yeah. So what have I done? I mean I've just sort of moved the yeah, atom remove out of the, the game map. And that doesn't seem particularly interesting yet, or, or useful even. But we've generalised the add and remove 
and this collection thing. So we can now take that extension point and put it with a bunch of other extension points. And we can sort of have a registry of extension points. Now. And here's a registry of extension points. And we might have uh, some of your subsystem has you know, is something dealing with uh, the rooms and something dealing with items and something we build a parser but out of say um, we're going to call them spells and spells might have sort of words so a spell might be get item and the um, there might be a bit of code which deals with um, interpreting what an item is for example but it's all very very regular code. So, meanwhile, somewhere else, which is um, that pain in the ass bit, which um, uh, we weren't sure where to go, now it can go into, well, it can go into, say, a manifest file, just a bit of JSON, which stores a load of files and a load of um, rooms. And just to, um, just to sort of, um, to, to reinforce, um, uh, this is package JSON, and we're going to, this is um, a keyword which I'm defining as a key um, uh, the property of path to the manifest file and the manifest will just have this something else so it no longer has anything to do with add room no longer that longer has anything to do with um, uh, the, 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 the game map itself it's just a, the blob of JSON which Compo can, can, um, can load uh, independently of the game map So, I'm going to stop and take any questions that anybody's got on that. Can I, can I see the um, extension point definition again, like where you create, where, where you... Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we're on 38. Sorry. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that key is just used for the get object groups, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean we might not need it. It's optional. You know, it, it's um, in my experience you you've got these add and remove things or register and unregister or you know, um, yeah. Um, Registering um, endpoints on the server, for example, would be the add, and there wouldn't be a corresponding remove. Um, and in my experience, sort of, there are many, or there are several well-known and, and, um, and well-used um, views that you want to see of, of the things that you've added mm -hmm. to, to that thing, whatever it is. And so an array would just be a straight array, uh, the um, iterable of the thing, the um, object would be a dictionary key of whatever you, whatever you gave it at construction time, and object groups would be um, key to a list of things. Okay. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Who's fascinated by this? And who's bored shit? <laughs> Good. They're all too polite. <laughs> I know. <yeah. laughs> Danny's just. <laughs> I've just spotted the errors of the code. <laughs> you got What? What's the error? No, I'm keeping them for myself. I'll tell you later. <laughs> First class trolling, don't you? I can tell you that everyone in the room would have seen it, but you're the only one who hasn't seen it. It's super obvious. <laughs> Um, it's not primary, it is the only way. 
Okay, so, so you see a lot having so the code is calling ads. So add and remove yeah. disappears. Okay, yeah, okay, so, so, so that's that this infantry is so before, but the add and remove, you know, you no longer have those, they all go in here. Yes, that's right. Yeah. That's do, do you have any kind of um, any kind of allowance for kind of Dynamic. Dynamic or conditional ads. Yeah. Yeah, where, where there's kind of logic to them. No, not really. Mainly because um, once you've got the sort of collection with events, you can you don't have to have you don't have to have the, use the views that your an extension point to provide. You can maintain your own um, data structure. And so you can filter that however you want, uh, you can sort of make your own internal state. Um, as you want. And I use the word internal state advisedly because I know that sort of application state and sort of architectural state are two different things. So sort of doing things together and then leave it and then you're sort of uh, the application state sort of works around inside that thing that you've, you've constructed. In the same way as you, know, you have a, an office building and it's got lifts and it's got doors and windows and shit but people wander around it and they're the sort of people who are, who are in there are the application state and the, the lifts and the doors and the windows are, are sort of architectural state. So when I say in terms of that, I mean architecturally in terms of state. Okay, any more questions? So, I've sort of introduced the manifest and yeah, I'm, these are just words that I wrote. Um, and um, the sort of screenshots where it didn't happen. Um, the, the manifest is really the sort of gatekeeper of um, what's. Um, so you've got this system, this um, of of what I'll call plugins, which are actually NPM mod modules with an app manifest, and. If it's not in that man manifest, it can't talk to the rest of the to, to the rest of the application, the rest of the system, and that really the manifest is a way to, for your JavaScript to get stuff from the rest of the application and also contribute to the rest of the application. So um, and that's quite that. As I said, very important from a um, a review reviewer point of view, but also. It's great for documentation. So, uh, if I open up a plugin and, or a, open up a manifest file and see, oh yeah, it's got this, this, and this, I can tell very, very quickly what it's doing, um, and I know that it's accurate because the manifest is sort of you. You have to ask for full stuff in the manifest, or you have to contribute stuff in the manifest in order for it to plug into the rest of the system. Okay. So yeah, the Soviet Russia reference nestling in there somewhere. I didn't think about it when I was writing these words. So yeah, I, I, I said I said the extension point. I gave the sort of constructor and I gave the sort of add and remove um, methods, but actually they were temporary. They don't actually exist. So you don't you don't actually you. you you ask for the extension point in the manifest, and then you get it from this plugin um, plugin structure, which is, is, is faking it. It is faked out. It, I mean, if you were writing a Chrome extension, uh, this would be the Chrome object. I don't know whether anybody's familiar with writing um, Chrome extensions. Um, but I sort of um, as a sort of hack. Not well, hack. I mean, this is the cleanest syntax I've come up with. You to get the plugin object, um, which is you asking for the extension points. The extension points. So um, that's that's the equivalent of newing an extension point, but that will get populated by the um, uh, by the rest of the system. And here's adding these these things to. Um, we, I think we've, yeah, we've already added um, added something, and we've got an extension point. Now we that was just key value for storage, just sort of simple JSON, and this is adding JavaScript actual code 
to um, to other things. Okay. So and we've got we've got um, a sort of require part, require a path, and then this will be a property path. So this is the simplest example here. Um, this is in um, lib spells and a pick up item. Um, and then this API is is completely up to whoever wrote um, whoever wrote uh, consumes the extension Okay. So at this point I would say now that thing about frameworks. This is really gesturing towards a framework construction. So you're, you don't get to be the one out of control. You get to be the one in control all the time. Yeah, and this is me just saying about the, you have the, the you, you get one of these spells and then you call it. You do what you need to, you, you get the, um, the arguments and, and then you pull it. It's bound to whatever thing that um, you would expect it to be bound to. And I'm saying that as if it means something. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, here we've got a class that we're um, we're exporting and we're going to new, new that class and then call that method on, on the instance that we just knew. And if we call another method on, or if we have a, another um, spell or drop item, um, it's, it's called on the same object. It's the same instance of, of that, the same class. Okay. So the first time the class is referenced, it, it creates it and invokes it the second time, it just invokes it on the original instance? Yeah. yeah. Is it a singleton or are you, would you have more than one of them? No, it's a singleton. If it's a singleton, why not just have it be a module? Because module is kind of like a singleton class. Yeah, could do. Testing. <laughs> Who thinks this is batshit so far? Who thinks this is... Because I'm, I'm really quite nervous about what, what everybody's thinking right now. Because this makes completely set, complete sense from a sort of... You know, um, this is quite a straight port from Java to JavaScript. And it makes sense for me because JavaScript does the, what in Java we call a, a, a reflection, um, and reflection is really hard in Java, Java. But in JavaScript, it's it's kind of made for it. So who's who's thinking this is really sensible? Who's thinking this is batshit and stupid? And why am I here? I'm fascinated. And, and, and who's still? I'm I'm I'm, I'm, in, I'm in between. You're in between. Mm -hmm. So somewhere between. Somewhere <laughs> where between those three. Yeah. Um, I um, the the manifest file. It, it feel it feels to me like it's a JSON, it's a JSON file. Yeah. It feels to me like you'll start wanting more control, more more power there. If it, and you, you know you know the kind of the thing about like uh, all configuration languages eventually evolve to be general purpose languages. Yes. And it kind of feels like that's what it wants to do. Like, you know, you've, you've got the special syntax here, like, but maybe you're going to want an extra bit, and maybe at some point you're going to, like, you're going to want to specify, like, a hundred numbers, and, oh, couldn't I, couldn't I, have, a, uh, couldn't I have a loop to do that, and uh, or maybe I have to generate this. And, uh, you know, no, I, 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 I understand what you're saying. Um, no, I would, I would say that with the restrictions, you start to say different, you sort of make different extensions or d a different extension points. So you might say, well, um, I've got a spell here, mm -hmm. but you might also want to say a spell provider. Yeah. And that would be a separate I extension, and that would just chuck out as many spells as, as you want from there, right? And then you're dropping into JavaScript there. Yeah. But, but that seems like that seems like a, a decision that the, um, the person creating the extension points has to make. Yes. Whereas, Yes. Uh, and, and, and it's kind of limiting me as the person extending those things. Like for example, yeah. you, you provided me as a spell and extension points. Yep. And I now want to take the entire dictionary and do some operation on every word and make them all into different spells. 
and I can't do that because because you haven't you never thought of that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, I don't think I'm. I don't think I'm trying to solve everything. I don't think the, the point is to make it possible for you to fuck up everything. But the point is, is for me to allow controlled extension to my my stuff, yeah. and so, so you're, you're it's to invite contributions. Um, you know, if 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 I invite you to a party and you turn up with you know all your, your undesirable friends. Yeah, sorry about that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm still going to say I'm going to say no to you, and and I don't want you to come with all you land as well. Just some of them. <laughs> so, 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 you, so you're trading some expressiveness for more, I guess, more audibility and uh, more um, under, understandability. Yeah. It's just trying to find the sweet spot, right, between allowing people to contribute but maintaining control. And having a system that you can reason about for every single Yes, yeah. that's exactly right. So. And these. So, shall I keep, keep going? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. So, um, I sort of. I mean, this was. This syntax I just sort of came up with, and uh, dotted path uh, required all with an exclamation mark in between. And you can sort of ar go arbitrarily, arbitrarily far with this. And here, here we've got two classes, and we've instantiated one of them. Uh, we've just instanti instantiated both of them, and we've, we've got methods on both of them, so we can sort of have different methods. So that's the end of extension point. Extension, and we're 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 going to do some demo in there. Um, so the next thing was okay. Global state. Sometimes we need it just for bootstrapping purposes, or you know, just occasionally we need it. We can't completely do that. Try to calm. So I made an internal extension point to to buggy manager called Singleton and let a manifest entry called Singleton's where I could you know, do exactly what I did before and have a have a bunch of objects here. Uh, which, which referenced uh, the same, same, exactly the same sort of thing as before. Um, and actually, this is uh, almost exactly what we've got coming out uh, the, the game that I'm going to show you. And this allows allows me to write a console app, a web app, um, a bunch of interesting things. Um, all my while maintaining the set of games for plugging on its own uh, and the consistency of the game. And to access these set singletons, if you've done any kind of um, Chrome extension work, then this is Nick's straight bulk note. That was bad. <laughs> you have these permission um, permissions, and you ask for permissions, and they end up on on the plugin. If you don't get, if you don't ask for the permission for, for that thing, you don't get it. It's just as um, as an underfund. But this gives you the configured game map that was uh, with, with all the extension points already done for you. So you, you can now go and read about the, the game map without having to reprocess all the extension. Okay. So what did I write? Before the start of this. <sighs> so yeah, are we going to do a demo soon? I'm sure we had a demo soon. 
Maybe I should. Um, yeah. So because the uh, extension points have um, an add and remove, everything has an add and remove. So plugins can be um, loaded and unloaded at runtime. That's an explicit design goal of, of web extensions, where you are able to uh, in install and uninstall things, enable and disable things, um, and, and everything keeps on working um, without having to restart the, the whole browser. That's how OSGI works um, with Java, um, and that's in an embedded system, um, which is, it worked like 20 years ago, it's fascinating. And it, um, and because you've got these these paths, uh, the required paths and the property paths, and the new um, the uh, instant instantiation, then there's no nothing's new anymore. So you can start using it like a DI framework. So making testing really really sweet. Um, and because you've got extension points that are completely agnostic to what is going to be added to that extension point, then you can mix and match plugins and suddenly they start, you know, you can have a, a game which has you know, 68 Middle Street and the skiff and and then maybe you take it to a different place, um, place in, uh, in the country and, and, and that works. Or you might be using for consoles um, or <coughs> servers or um, I'll show you that in a minute. That's... And you can actually start instrumenting a server because without necessarily needing a console, but you can instrument it as if you did have a console, and suddenly you're able to sort of inquire within about a running a running server um, using a. Does that make sense? <laughs> and. The separating of the extension points from the extenders are really, um, that's, I mean, that's key to the whole thing. And for, for my money, it, it's, it's the sort of, I spent a long time talking about it because it allows you to, and this, um, this, uh, this adding and removing and the, um, the path um, thing um, makes it so that you don't have to do any wiring, and every time you move, move something around, you don't have to rewire um, anything, you just need to change it in one place. But the separation of extenders being the object means you can have content creators working on content, and the people who are interested in writing actual code working on there, uh, are on, on code, and they can they sort of it plugs everything plugs together without anybody having to communicate at all. <laughs> Which is that sounds like a why why would you want to do that or or why is that so important? But when you're sort of talking in, in terms of everybody been working in the same room for on a, a hat night, you don't want to you want that sort of the sort of Michael J. Fox. Um, self, um, self, uh, uh, shoe self tying shoelaces um, effects going on um, because you know, who wants to deal with wiring? Who wants to deal with that plumbing? I think I'm going to actually, I don't, yeah, no, I'm going to do a demo actually because <laughs> I thought there was a demo slide. I'm, not, I'm wondering if we should have a quick break, it's been an hour, so maybe. Yeah, do you want to be... not at all. Anyone that needs to go to the loo, grab a drink, just quick out a minute, yeah. Oh, okay.
Yeah, so like the idea is is small stuff. Yeah, so we're going to talk about it. I really like the idea of something that stays around each last thing now. Good, thanks. Have a good back to the people. That's the best way I've got for myself. And then Damien will be able to write a piece of stuff for that.
the last hour or so was very um, long and tiring. I'm sorry about that. And I'm hoping that I can show you um, some demos which might make them work. Um, or if you've understood everything, which is like, yeah, <laughs> I understand that. I understand the benefit. I'm going home to use it now. <laughs> so, okay. So I talked about this game. Um, Unfortunately, I haven't had time to um, write the, the version for um, the um, 68 Ministry, um, so I've just got the skiff, which is where I work, and it has a code in the house. Um, so, um, we've got a question mark to give us a list of spells, and we talked about um, the list of spells, and we can, um, we've got some items, and um, in this particular thing, the items have clues, which um, are listed there, a large padlock. Um, and this was, I, th I had this, um, this uh, idea that uh, this text adventure would be used as a training, um, uh, a thing for training people how to lock, uh, lock the skiff up. When, um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, look, I haven't finished it, of course. Um, so um, what people needed to do is they needed to go and find John and Anna. Um, John or Anna, um, so um, uh, actually let's uh, go back, um, yeah, let's um, get the padlock and pick up the padlock and we've got Simon's um, MacBook Air there, a freelance is shiny. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so I he's not going to like that. He's not going to like that. <laughs> 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 but you've got it swiped. Yeah, there we go. Notice um, that get up, get item thing. Uh, that MacBook Air and Padlock are both um, instances of item. So um, the spell uh, the spell word item maps to anything that um, is interesting. And let's wander south. Go to um, the, the engine room. Um, the skiff is um, a co-working space. If you don't know, um, no, it's um, the two people who all, um, uh, run it. Um, are both ex navy so um, they've modelled everything after um, boats. So um, the skiff is a small boat, the engine room, which is a dingy room with no windows, um, and then the skiff, the building it is, um, and then the galley, which is um, where it eats. And um, I'm just getting bored of writing now, so. Um, <laughs> and now we find John Manor. And we find that um, John Manor um, is, is an item. And it's rather, um, it's a fixed item. So if I try and um, pick up a John and Anna, John, John or Anna um, again, um, have I spelled John or Anna right? No, I don't even have. The John or Anna isn't moving. Really so, so great. Um, and I'm going to wander around. And so that's that's roughly the, the that's the test adventure. Yay! <laughs> I was hoping that more, I could write more, um, but honestly, I was hoping that it was going to be a hack night and we could produce lots of content for, for this. And, and the idea was going to be that this was going to be a Slack bot, which we could uh, attach to any Slack um, instance. But unfortunately, as everyone knows, um, Slack uh, has various different, um, uh, what's the word, um, limits, that, um, rate limits, um, which means that we can't make a Slack. So I'm going to quit out of that, um, and then I'm going to show you the next one, um, which is it's in the same directory. Notice it's it's in the compo directory, but I'm just starting it with uh, what am I starting? I'm starting it with a console, uh, a game, and a skiff there, and I'm starting it with console and management and a graph and a server. So well, what's that? So let's see what. Um, uh, what uh, commands we've got. So this is all the same code, but with different extenders, different things contributed. So it's the same same table, it's the same help, it's, um, the, the help command is the same. Um, but otherwise, because of the different plugins, it's, it's a completely different application. This is where sort of remixable comes from, it, it, it's that you just, you can load in extra things at, um, at runtime and, and get a different application. So we might have the list of extension points that we um, we can um, 
and support and um, this is a server so um, let's see what routes we've got okay great well let's go and have a look at um, the compo SVG um, thing here which uh, if I'm not mistaken is it 88 to be buying cards? I'm slightly typing blind here. Okay. <laughs> so um, this is the, the list of this is a sort of representation of the plugins that are, are installed. So we see a, a console here and we see all the commands which are um, well the console is actually provided by, over here by this console. This is um, the compo contrib console here. Um, and the compo contrib, contrib MGMT provides all these extra things and the MGMT graph um, has, oh there's a show map what, and that's a, oh that's a console command as well so we should be able to say uh, show map Ooh. which is in, in, in dot, um, the dot command. Now, let's see whether, what, what is my next error? Should we see? Should we find <laughs> out? Um, so I'm going to get rid of that. Uh, MGMT, MGMT plus, great, all right. So we're back to the game. We've still got um, the, the management um, console. And the management console and the game are coexisting in the same place. In this, and it's actually that, that console is the, with, the actual, with the read line is being run by the same, the same thing, but now it's supporting both of those things. And I've also loaded in the game graph viz, which I happen to know uses the server. So now we can say, uh, we can say, well, let's list the EP, the uh, extension points we've got, and we've got roots, I think. Uh, roots. I wish I had um, command completion, but I just haven't done that. So now we've got two, two separate things, um, two separate routes here. So we've got a map. So let us have, uh, have a look at the map. So that's a representation of what we just well, the game that we're playing now. So star is a player. These blue, uh, these are blue, and yellow circles are um, are items. So we can get the padlock again. And if we reload it, then it disappears, and we can uh, go south. For example, and now if we go back here, then I should. So that star is now we're, we're in the engine room, and we can learn the whole we're in the engine room here. And if we drop the padlock here, then we should be able to see that. that. Okay, so what else can we do? Hmm. Hmm. Now, I'm going to tempt the demo gods. Anybody mind if I do that? Is anybody happy with that? No, I are always happy. Always happy. Can I just ask, um, are you using a tool to do any of those SVGs? Or are you using the other side? Sorry? Are you, are you using a tool to render the SVGs? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm using graphics. So I think um, the, the graph is, is the package, but um, dot is the command uh, that I'm using. Uh, and it's with um, child process. Um, so I'm calling out to uh, a compiled block of, of something like that. And that produces the SVG. So I'm wondering what to do here. So we might say, let's go to the game. And why don't we reload? One of the yeah. Why don't we, we um, show you reloading the skiff? So, so this is the um, here's the skiff here, and I 
that, I'm not sure whether actually anything happens in here. Yeah, there's, there's, there's no JavaScript at all. Um, you, you see that index um, JS and it's actually an empty file. Um, it, it's just something to attach that file. Um, so I'm going to load the, uh, the manifest. Oh God, why don't I just do this in the uh, window? What's too deep, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so. Okay. So why don't we have? Why don't we add another room? And what are we going to call this room? Should we, what room should we have? Should we have it outside or should we... What are Carpool. We Carpool. Oh yeah. I don't know where that is. It's a bit next to your room. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> so you went you to buy the, uh, the horse, the, the stable door. Oh, uh, right. Okay, well, I'm not going to have um, multiple, multiple bits. Oh, I guess, so um, where is it in relation to um, the GIF, it's uh, the classic? East of classic. East of classic, okay. So, let's put east of, east of classic, and it's GIF carpool, yeah. what do I call it? Yeah, yeah carpool. It's the, the useful uh, primer on uh, skip topology. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I <I'm> use it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, just ooh, all right, great. <laughs> um, we don't need that. And what is it? West is some um, skiff classic. No. What, what does the text file relate to? Sorry. What does the text file relate to? Um, exactly what the game map uh, um, game map object does, which is nothing at this stage. Okay. Um, okay. Does that look um, feasibly right? Mm -hmm. And that's not going to fuck up with some JSON error? Have we done well? Mm -hmm. We've done well. Please, the demo gods. Well, we haven't done yeah. well. Yeah. <laughs> you too soon. Yeah, right. So, I'm going to reload. Um, uh, is it restart or is it reload? Let's skip. Oh, there we go. Good. So now I'm hoping. Um, <gasps> <laughs> mm. Yeah, the demogods haven't been that good. Because the demogods, I don't know where, where I am. Inventory should be the same. So, uh, you dropped it. Oh, yeah. you had a padlock and you dropped it. Oh, did I? So, what happened to the. Um, the... Okay. Well, I'm going to um, not debug that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> mainly, cause, mainly, not because it isn't working, but mainly because Ali said, can you cut it short? <laughs> So yeah, and then, okay, so let's go back to, to 
this. Yeah, so the reloading stuff is, is um, that works, but you need to think about that. And the the newing is really quite interesting because you can, and this was one of the that emergent things was that because you didn't have to worry about moving this add method and um, getting the two the, the objects um, the interesting objects in the same place, then you you didn't have to worry about that. So you could move code around like nobody's business, like any 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 way you wanted. Um, I've showed you that. Plugins can be mixed and matched, and, and the application is just a collection of plugins. Um, and so you can reuse um, the interesting plugins like the console and the server. Um, and um, and that, that means that suddenly I'm writing more console apps. And I'm writing more server because you know I don't need to do all the boilerplate of worrying about read line, worrying about um, setting up Express. It's just I just whack in at an endpoint, and suddenly that's my code running on a server. It's awesome. And if anybody comes along and says, um, I can make a better server, I can say, okay, you make a better server, it's more resilient, or you fix this bug, and suddenly all my servers are more, uh, are more better. <laughs> <laughs> it's a word. Um, and you, one of the things I'm trying to encourage um, the person who wrote Whimsy um, Pro is that you can write a whole plug-in, a whole add-on, which is just Easter eggs of cool stuff that's going to turn up in other people's extension points. <laughs> so, uh, can you can imagine developer tools suddenly having, um, suddenly having a text adventure in it. Or, <laughs> or the, the thing I'm writing at the moment is cloud to bar, but the extendable version. So you can have <laughs> millennials to snake people, or um, whatever the other ones you want. The manifest, they summarise and document the plugin, blah, blah, blah. And the wiring goes away, so yeah, you've got very low cost of reuse, which is what I was saying, refactoring and cooperation, and everybody's very highly productive. So, I, this is something that's been running around my head, which is even if you don't like most of the stuff that I've said, the fact that you're modularising your code makes things makes things better for everybody. So that's why I'm going to leave, um, leave this on. Not this um, particular, I didn't have time to change all the words, but this is a good thing. That's, that's good. Thank you very much. Which were which really were 
in the um, not not diving too deep into technicalities, but um, in a parsa you have a production rules. Um, they're obviously familiar with those, um, and um, uh, so they were they were grammatical rules. Um, so spell words with actually means them grammatical rules. Okay, I think there was a couple that were outside of code. Uh, but, um... So I did talk about the words that I wasn't going to talk about. Um, and that was I'm not asking you to talk about the words, only about the, about the, the fact that you use the word to, word, word to describe them as words. Are you, are you being a pee down? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. It's no judgment. Well, no, 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 it's, it's good. If we didn't have uh, attention to detail in your expertise, then we'd be in real trouble. Yeah? I, I'm just genuinely interested. Is it a programmer thing that you can say you type a, uh, I'll type a word into uh, Google, say, and the word is my cat with a space in it? Is, it like, is there a case for calling that a word rather than a phrase? It's me, like, maybe we have dwelt on this for too long now. But it's, it's a genuine If question. we go back and find a slide, then we can find context one. Maybe a couple of I can give you a better answer, but right now I don't remember, so I don't can't give you a more concrete answer than that. And because we know each other, I'm, I'm taking the best. So. <laughs> <laughs> what about versioning? Because we plugins and extension points and whatnot. Um. So in OSGI and in Clips. Um, there is quite a rich um, versioning semantics, um, and um, the sort of dependencies um, are relatively advanced. And um, you can talk about the sort of um, there was a sort of package dependency, which was the essentially the class um, or the group of classes um, versus the plugin uh, version. So you've got package package dependency and then plugin dependency, and over time, they went from plugin dependency to uh, package dependency. Um, but if I remember rightly, the version lay with the plugin itself. So it was the sort of unit distribution that got versioned. Um, now, I, I have deliberately um, spent most of my time saying, no, um, I'm not going to duplicate what's already happening in, in NPM. And so I've left NPM to do the versioning. But what, what, what I kind of mean is, so let's say I, I make my thing which has extension points, yep. um, and that's all great, and the people write their plugins for it, and then I realise that the API was crap, and the extension point needs to take, I don't know, strings rather than numbers, and what do I do? That's um, a really good question. Um, you'd probably use a um, a different property key, okay. um, rather than um, try, so try and my extension point dot b two. Yeah, you yeah, and you, you, you a lot of um, a lot of the sort of um, guidelines on API design uh, are around how the heck do you avoid this, and um, be very very conservative about opening up an API. Start off with the minimum that you can possibly provide, and then. Want, wants and only if people are asking for it, then you start opening it up um, and sort of publicise, publish um, your, your API and only very conservative. And if you do need to complete your reader, make sure you call it new API because then people will know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> call, it, call it next generation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Or final. Final, final, final generation. generation. <laughs> <laughs> So, looking at this as a web extensions um, kind of implementation, uh, I wrote a very, um, it's not even published, hacky Feedly extension mm -hmm. um, so that I could take videos and put them into a playlist because there was no support for it in Feedly. Mm -hmm. And I could see um, all of this stuff I could interface with in Feedly being sort of a single page app um, so that I could enhance it in this way. But all of it was not nothing was in that global space, so I couldn't access anything in order to enhance it. So instead, I had to 
hack into it. Like we could grab the use of jQuery, for example, and with that as low my own, and stuff like that. And then just kind of hack it in, use the CSS that they mm -hmm. already had, and that works. Uh, in, in this case, it would be really interesting how, how would this interface with, um, you know, based on my experience of browser extensions, with the actual context of the page? So, um, it's a great question because um, that's kind of, yeah, um, I'm sort of trying to work out how to move all this stuff into, uh, into the client side. And um, there's, um, if anybody's interested in this, this is, um, there's this content JavaScript, which is JavaScript which you can run in the same place as a web page. Um, and you can run it before or after uh, the, the document. Um, and then there's um, what's called background or event pages, which are in a separate um, uh, JavaScript context. And um, there's process separation and, and what have you. So my, the, the design is up in the air at the moment. And um, as an implementation detail, I'm sort of leaning towards this being just for the event pages and the um, background pages, so in the, in the browser Chrome, um, rather than um, available to the content. Um, however, um, there's nothing to stop the collecting of the um, of, of the extension point in your in your um, ex in your extension. This is why I was talking about language earlier. Um, collecting of the um, extenders and then um, then pushing them to the content page if they if content um, content scripts are asking for it. So your content script in your add-on um, is asking your background page for the extenders that it, it, it gathered from everybody else's extension point, uh, everybody else's add-ons and extensions. There's a scenario there. No? Yeah. Actually, I was going to ask earlier, um, just to kind of simplify it down again a bit. Um, so you said at the start it was, it was no, I've, I've only really got really experience with, with Meteor, so this is this is raw node, right? No, well this is this is node without I mean the way I I talk about node, I almost never build servers um, with node. Um, I use them to make sort of interesting things or not very interesting things or um, <laughs> but anything except servers. I'm not a web developer and I've always said that. Um, and in fact JavaScript became, became an interesting language to me when I didn't have to write it in. So, uh, okay. I think uh, the monitor is. Uh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>